Hello, I'm Old Radio Guy with the sixth in my series of short videos about Photoline, the powerful German-produced photo editor plus. These videos are directed at English-speaking photographers seeking an alternative external editor to use with Adobe Lightroom. The translation to English and sometimes non-standard approach to editing often produce a difficult challenge to English speakers evaluating or learning Photoline. This video explains more of the tools in the PL Toolbox. By default, the Toolbox is located on the left side of the Photoline window, but you can easily drag and drop to place it on the right side of the screen. I've covered some of the tools in a previous video, so I will not review them here. I'll also skip the Gradient tool to discuss in a later video. Of the remaining tools in the toolbox, I'll cover what I consider the most important. Don't forget, with any of these tools, when the cursor is over any tool icon, there's usually an operational hint in the status line found in the lower left of the photo line window. And adjustments for the tool are located in the Tool Settings panel in the upper right of the screen. The Layer tool is used for selecting, moving, creating, scaling, shearing, rotating, and distorting layers. For example, with multiple layers, you select any of the layers above the background and move it. This tool is among the most important in Photoline, and you should read the Layer tool entry in the Photoline help file to get a better understanding of its operation. Just select the Layer tool and press F1 to bring up the context-sensitive entry in Help. In the Magnifier Toolbox, three options are found here by clicking on the tiny triangle at the bottom right of the icon. They are Magnifier, also known as Zoom, the Moving Hand Tool that others call the Pan or Hand Tool, and the Handy Measurement Tool for determining the distance between two points on an image. Just select it and drag and you get the measurement at your, the end of your line. With the magnifier tool selected, left clicking allows you to enlarge the image. Right clicking makes the image smaller. You can also perform that by using the shift left key and clicking with the left mouse to make the image smaller. The minus key on the keyboard also decreases the size of the image on the screen. The plus key magnifies the image. And you'll find that there are controls in the general toolbar for changing the size of the image on the screen. This is the distort tool. Others call it a warp tool. Select the Distort tool and use the brush to apply distortions to the image. As with all of the Photoline brushes, change the brush size by holding down the Control key and move the mouse while holding the left mouse key. You can enlarge or decrease the size. This is a vector shaped stack of tools. Clicking the tiny red triangle in this square reveals a drop-down for a list of vector shapes that can be drawn on the screen. For your work with Lightroom, you'll likely not use these tools. Text is inserted with this icon. Text is added in a new transparent layer. To create a paragraph type structure, select the text tool, place and hold the left mouse button, drag it to the opposite corner of the desired text box, and then type. To simply type a word or phrase after selecting the text tool, click the mouse on the start point and begin typing text. With either method, the text can be moved with the layer tool. To add a drop shadow, select the small layer style icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Here's another Vectors Tools stack. Selecting the tiny red triangle in the bottom of the box here gives you a choice of three vector drawing tools. Again, 
it's unlikely you'll use these tools with Lightroom. The crop tool here in photo line is very powerful. Click and draw to select the area to be cropped, then press enter or press the crop tool button in the tool settings box. Additional settings for crop are found in the tool settings panel. For a preset crop, type the width into the left window and the height into the right window. You can also enter the DPI in the third window. Like many of the photo line tools, there's a place in tool settings for crop for recording, storing, and retrieving presets. To change your setting from portrait to landscape or vice versa, left click on the tiny swap values tab. There's also a place to change the border color and a choice of rule of thirds, golden cut, or no internal guidelines within the crop boundary box. To deselect your crop bounding box, use Control D. There are two eyedropper type tools in the toolbox. The first one is the color picker with the standard eyedropper icon for selecting a color from your image and photo line. Holding it over a point shows a small box with the color and RGB values beneath. Left click to use the color for foreground. Control Shift click picks the color for background. Options include a one-point sample, a three-point average, and a five-point average. The second of these eyedropper-like tools is called the color position. Clicking at various points around the image marks those points and brings up the picture info panel, if not already visible, with the RGB values for each of those points. Dragging the points out of the work area removes them. The brush tool offers four options for brushes, but most of the time you'll be using the painting brush. With Lightroom, you'll use it often for fine-tuning touch-ups. That's in addition to painting foreground with the left mouse button and the background with the right mouse button. Pull down the shift key to draw a straight line. You can also choose a new color by holding down the Alt key and moving the eyedropper around until you find the color you want. Select it, and then you can paint with that color. The two options for erase are standard. One is the eraser, and the other is the auto eraser. Most other programs refer to the auto erase tool as the background eraser. Quick selection is very good for selections where there is significant contrast difference between the areas to be included and excluded. Thus, it is great for creating cutouts or photo objects to have a transparent background. It ranks among the best of simple cutout tools offered by photo editors. Modifications and tool settings include define the bounds of the object, mark the object, mark the background, erase marks, and erase the selection. To use the tool, select quick selection, draw a bounding box around the area to be cut out. Photo line begins its estimate of what's to be excluded. All of the area outside the bounding box is uh, removed. And then photo line does its estimate of what you want to be cut out. You then modify that estimate with the tool setting options up here. Let's use mark objects to clean up the inside here. As we mark those interior points, photo line makes other adjustments on the outside as you can see. Now we have an area up here that's marked to be included but it should be excluded and what we want to do is choose the mark background and we can do that by pressing the shift key or selecting the tool in the tool settings box. I'll use the shift key and you see it's marked in red and it's now excluded. Now this has done a pretty good job of selecting without some additional work. There's an area in here and an area in here that I need to remove if I were going to take pains to get this done perfectly. But I will go ahead now and assume that, that everything is correct. So I go to the edit menu and I want to copy without colored edge. And next I have a choice of 
merging the copy or paste as a layer or paste as a document. And I think I will paste this one as a document. And now we have this as a photo object with a transparent background. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it as a layer onto this and then drag it and resize and add a shadow outside. And you see we have two layers. We have a transparent layer that we've resized and then our building background that maintains its original size. The companion to the quick selection tool is the border matting tool for making cutouts with semi-transparent areas. Things like blonde hair, wedding veils, and bubbles. There's no hint on the status bar on how to use this tool. You only get a note that says creates matting for hair and so on. I find this tool to be extremely inadequate for real-world semi-transparent work. In my opinion, semi-transparent cutout should be made a part of the quick selection tool with better options for selecting both multiple colors to keep and multiple colors to abandon. In the meantime, for intended cutouts with semi-transparency, you're better off using a good plug-in like Topaz Remask with PhotoLine. PhotoLine has three excellent tools for repair work. The first is the copy brush, and it's the equivalent of the clone tool found in other programs, and there are adjustments for it over in the tool settings panel, and you can change the brush size and the brush type, and the brush type normally for this kind of uh, adjustment should be the, a soft brush selected here. The remove brush is the second tool in the repair arsenal. It removes spots or targeted areas, replacing with pixels from the surrounding area. The only option in the tool settings panel is a retry button. If you're not satisfied with the first replacement by the remove brush, press retry to select replacement from another area of the picture. The repairing brush referred to as the healing brush in the help file is the third of the repair tools. This name inconsistency is likely to be fixed very soon whether it's eventually called the repairing brush or the healing brush, this tool is perfect for doing things like skin repair onto a separate transparent layer. The filter brush has a stack of several effects that can be used. In the tool settings panel, you'll find 14 filter options to be applied locally rather than to the entire image. For example, using the Gaussian blur, we can apply the filter locally to obscure text on a sign or a license plate. Well that's my quick overview of some of the tools in the PhotoLine toolbox. Digital photographers using Lightroom or similar programs for raw image conversion and management still need an external editor for many image corrections. You don't need to spend almost 700 US dollars for Adobe Photoshop CS6 for that role. PhotoLine is a perfect alternative at a much lower price. It's available for both Windows and Mac. The 30-day trial copy can be downloaded from pl32.com. I hope this short video has been of some assistance to you. This is All Radio Guy. Thanks for watching.